I think one of the things I um, I never really discuss with anyone is, I guess some of the doubts you have about, probably not so much as a player, but more as a captain. I didn't want to show any weakness around that. I didn't want to let anyone know that I had doubts. I remember going away and doing some flying and I, I was sulking a bit. It comes out more in silence than words. I just close off and just don't engage with people when I get really uh, wound up. My family, we didn't really talk about it much. It was, oh, well, you know, it's been and gone, get on with it. And it's easy to say that, but underneath, you know, it's still, you know, I don't think uh, we're very good at uh, <laughs> discussing uh, those sort of things. Yep. I knew that we had a team that was good enough to win the tournament, but it didn't come down to what our talent was. It came down to when the heat came on, we weren't able to find a way to win. You know, so training harder or being fitter, I don't think that would have made any difference that day. I probably was naive and thinking, you know, I can play well whenever it counts. And perhaps over my first few years, I'd, I'd been able to do that to some degree. But as a captain, I sort of had to admit that I, I didn't have the tools in the box when it came to handling pressure. And, you know, that's where it became a bit like, well, how am I going to get that? Or is it just the fact I haven't got it and that's it? We need to not just pay lip service to the mental side or just say because we're going to train harder, we're going to be better. We need to actually do some work on addressing the, the elephant in the room. The All Blacks in three in a row now not been able to handle it. We are no good when it really all comes down to that one moment or that one day. OK, now we've got to find some people or put some time into not so much sweating, but actually sitting and doing some work on the mental stuff. I felt like I almost had to start again in terms of the captaincy and go, well, there's so much to learn, you know, let's go and do that. Sometimes there are moments that are so undeniable that you can't move past them. Often that's adversity. And sometimes in sport, it hits you in the face. We started working with Richie in around 2010, particularly redemption. Uh, he didn't want to give up. And at that stage, they're obviously thinking hard about the lessons from 2007. The basic explanation is that processes, catching a ball, kicking a ball, running, passing, things that are pretty much automatic, 
People try and over control because their mind goes to the outcome. Scoreboards, clocks, time running down, things not going our way. And so there's a sense of loss of control. He actually explained to me, and this is where I really enjoyed what pressure is and how it affects your body from a biology point of view, what your brain does. And, and I, I just remember thinking, wow, this is, um, makes it real, you know? It's not as though we're trying to say that pressure's not there, I'm not gonna feel it, everyone feels it, but how do you deal with it? What you've got to focus on is your capacity to control your mind in any given situation. If you're not in control of your mind, you're no good to us. We place great emphasis on clear thinking under pressure rather than just thinking positively. Uh, think about pilots, they don't prepare just for good flights. They prepare for the, the bad weather, the difficulties, mechanical and all those sort of situations. Uh, that's what we'd expect them to do. For sports teams, if you deal with those moments better than other people, then that's a huge advantage. Uh, Richie's at the upper end of the scale in terms of his inquisitiveness, uh, his curiosity. I think these are some of his most important features. So he could see pretty quickly that there was huge benefit in exploring this space, the dark side, what can go wrong. And in those circumstances, how do you operate? Either you see them as a, a threat, or you see them as a great challenge. And people like Richie thrive on that. They get that straight away. When I sometimes feel like the weight's getting on my shoulders and you get tense about it, just take a moment to go, well, I want to test myself. And that's actually quite uplifting. The guys with planning out still feel pressure too. If we come and bring it, then they're going to go, well, how do we deal with the pressure? So you put the pressure on them. That's the exciting part of sport, you know. With the Bittersloe Cup on the line and this being the last test before the start of the World Cup, a record-breaking appearance for Richie McCaw. It'll be his 142nd test match and that's more than any other player anywhere. I want it really badly this week. Uh, give me my last game in New Zealand. Playing at Eden Park, which to be honest is probably the favourite place to play as an All Black. Some pretty special memories there. I find it really hard to believe what I'm seeing. For about the two hours beforehand, I'm just shaking. <laughs> I can't even hold a drink. I'm shaking that much. I still shake, yeah. I'd love to finish off as an All Black with the bitters in the cupboard. And, you know, in October, it'd be nice to have that cup too. You know, I'd be lying if I said it doesn't mean a hell of a lot. of a number seven, when the opposition's got the ball, your job is to get it back, 
somehow or, or make it tough for the opposition to play. And if you do that well, you're going to frustrate the hell out of them. I've been against number sevens that frustrate the hell out of you. He's always thinking about what's happening next. And that's a quality that you see in the great players. Uh, he's not having to see it happen and then go and react. It's about, OK, it's unfolding. What am I going to do here? Bang. He's in the right place. He's anticipated it. Good players and the good players that have instinct will straight away see the picture of that's probably where the collision's going to happen, so I'm going to go straight there. And so you're arriving uh, as the tackle's happening. That's how you beat opposition. Rather than being the fastest, you actually run the shortest distance. And that will be that. That is all she wrote as the All Blacks retain the Blatterslow Cup. Never, ever seen that at Eden Park before for a player. It's pretty cool that 40-odd uh, thousand people hung around and gave you a clap for the last game in New Zealand. Yeah, it was... I don't even want to talk about it now, but a bit of a lump in the throat. It's moments like that that make everything you've done seem worthwhile and you feel proud of that. And, uh, and because of that, there are a few emotions. Probably in the past I would have just suppressed all them and just been... And I still was pretty straight, really. Um, but uh, I knew it was probably... didn't hurt to show a little bit. You look beautiful. Can I ask, what's the plans with hockey? Hoping to qualify then for Rio. That's the plan. Hey, you guys have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Yeah. Good Over a lot of the rugby career, I never shared a lot with, with anyone. I think that's one of the things I've appreciated lately is being able to share some of that stuff when things are going good or bad. You can actually, I don't know, halve the problem, boy. <laughs> Whinging. Um. You need a whole rack? No, but you might as well cook both of them. The pretty cool thing about Gemma is she understands what it takes to be a top sports person. I've got a good huh? I play hockey for the Black Sticks, have for the last eight years. Before the last Olympics, I got a message on Facebook, of all places. And he just said good luck in London. I actually forgot to, to reply to him because we were so busy and then we lost the semi-final which was devastating you know and then he wrote a really nice message basically saying that they'd been in a, in a similar position um, in, in 2007 being knocked out of the World Cup and um, he knows that deep um, you know devastating feeling. No putting away. Only for you not for me. No, I won't have any. You know, we're quite old-fashioned. <laughs> Just the way we approach life. Our friends and family are really important. But the most extraordinary thing about him is that he's quite ordinary. <laughs> I actually mean that in the nicest way possible. These ones are hard today. Typical. <laughs> Just today, or...? Every day. Yeah, well, I think you've got to be competitive to make the top. Oh, yeah. She's definitely competitive. Here we go. We've got one. We're very competitive, but it's no not excuse. like first to get ready out the door, you know. I don't often win, if I'm totally honest, but you try beat him and let me know how you get on. Yeah, I started to become a bit more aware of that, you know, I'd had my blinkers on and not allowed anyone anywhere near me. I love what I do, but rugby's not everything. And, you know, take, it took me a while to, to understand that, I suppose.
The All Blacks are heavy favourites to win the Cup for just the second time. Failures to win the Webb Ellis Trophy have come to define the All Blacks. Destiny beckons for Captain McCaw. As a mate and a player playing alongside him, I just thought that his focus was he's going to do anything he can to get this team to win the World Cup in 2011. He was just so intense and so focused on that. It was, it was hard to have a normal conversation with him unless it wasn't about the team succeeding or rugby. It's like I felt like I'd almost lost my mate. <laughs> You know, I was questioning myself. I know the coaches are probably doing the same, and the performance has started to be better and better. And I felt we made progress, but I, I really didn't know if any lessons had been learnt because we still hadn't really been tested when it really all came down to it. Just strong favourites. They're the men on whose shoulders rest the hopes of an entire nation, but the pressure is intense. For almost a quarter of a century, their illustrious predecessors have tried and failed to win rugby's greatest prize. This is what the country is desperate to see a repeat of. 1987, and New Zealand beat France to win the very first World Cup on home soil. Son pays voudrait que ce soit lui. Lui, Richie Macko, le fils de Fermier qui apporte à la Nouvelle-Zélande ce qu'elle attend depuis 24 ans, la Coupe du Monde. If there's ever a game you wanted to play, it as a young fella, it would be a World Cup final at Eden Park for the All Blacks. Well, it's the last thing the All Blacks need. Key players struck down by injury. The injury guards have been far from charitable to the All Blacks captain. I don't think I understood the extent of the problem I had in my foot, so... I just sort of chose to kind of ignore it. Very early on, we made the diagnosis that he had a stress fracture on the outside of the foot. It would have been very painful. And some extra little fractures were actually happening in game. We all knew it was broken, but no one was prepared to ask that question because then we would have had to morally have done something about it. So. We all chose not to. Moaning about it makes the team. All it would do was get them sidetracked. They knew there was something wrong because they couldn't train. But I, I just wanted to fill them with confidence so they didn't have that to worry about. Foot's good. Um, yep, no, really good. And it's just one of those things, you know. I remember Kerry Evans was great in that just talk through, visualise some of the scenarios. I was a little bit saying, well, geez, this is unfair. And I said, oh, it's just there to test you, you know, and actually see if you can deal with it. Did he wobble? Of course. Did he wish it was a different way? Of course. He's an ordinary man, but he was doing something extraordinary there in the sense that most people don't have that type of threshold. Pain is one of the greatest diverters of attention in terms of closing your mind down and thinking clearly about pressurised situations. Now heading for the biggest game of their life. The All Blacks in France meeting for the sixth time in Rugby World Cups. That's a record. France have knocked New Zealand out of two of the last three World Cups. I was unsure all week as to whether I'd actually be able to play. I told everyone I could, but I was worried because it was really not in very good shape and it was sore and I was like, am I going to be able to block that out to be able to play? If I could get him to the start of the game and get him out there, then we just get into the rhythm of the game and then we would deal with what we had to do afterwards.
terms of going to dark places, that was right up there. have got their backs up. I was like, wow, this is what I've prepared for. Last four years, I've prepared myself for this next 20 minutes. It's called pressure. Just a battle of attrition. One point. That's the type of mindset of going to dark places. I mean, it really, really hurts, but you know deep down you could get there. Ball been turned over by the looks of things. On the core. Forced to turn over there. Ball. He wanted to be present. He wanted hands on the ball. And even the area of the pitch and what he would be doing at that time, he had imagined. And he'd done that in a really deep and profound way. Instead of being scared of it, I was embracing it. Bring it on. To try and get the ball they had to offend. And they're offside. And the All Blacks are the world champions. Well, some are too exhausted to really celebrate as yet. That'll come later. That was the moment that I think gave him such trust in the process. How am I going to do that again? I was really concerned about having that same draining feeling that I got from 2011. It was actually a discussion I had with Kerry, and I said, have you got any ideas about how you look at that? And he thought about it, and he said, actually, if you try and repeat it and do it the same, that's recipe for disaster. You actually have to do it different. I remember going away from that conversation actually feeling really good about it. Like, it has to be different, it's got to be different, I want it to be different. And that made it quite exciting about, well, how are we going to do this? Now what's the scenario for going through the whole process again? It's one thing winning at home, but we know that the All Blacks haven't been successful in Northern Hemisphere tournaments, and no other team has repeated back-to-back. So how you frame that up becomes a very interesting thing. There's no doubt that as time goes on, you keep looking for that bigger challenge. So winning a World Cup after winning one four years earlier, that's a bigger challenge than what it was. That's what excites you. He's almost like uh, an explorer in a way. He wants to, he likes the uncharted territory. He wants to go to places uh, and take the team to places that no one else uh, has been before. And in many ways, that idea of being first uh, is a different one to just winning. Look, I think the key to whatever you do in life is uh, being able to, to have a challenge in front of you and, and then be learning. Like, if you stop learning or, you know, you get sick of what you're doing, whereas you can be better at it, that's what keeps you turning up.